Could we watch the squid game? Or, what? We could, we could watch the squid game. I want to get it out of the way. I don't want to watch the squid game. I didn't see that. You just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's that <laughs> 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 Check 95 along with my cohorts, per, per usual, which is weird because usually I'm sitting in the middle. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't have any like promotional stuff for this, but uh, we kind of just took off with Horror Fest without warning. <laughs> As you saw in the last review, we were supposed to do this in two, in two movies in one night, but um, we kind of just shifted our schedule around, so this is technically movie two of night one, right fellas? <laughs> It's all the same time. Yeah, yeah, all, all yeah, the same time. Yeah, this was the first movie we watched. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, first <laughs> movie we watched. <laughs> In case you missed it, we watched the film Would You Rather uh, previously before this. And this film that we have finished watching right now is Stephen King's 1922. If you haven't seen this film before, it does not leave you with a feel good feeling at the end of the movie. Like most Stephen Kings don't. <laughs> Unless you're a clown, then you hate your life completely. So I thought the entire premise of the film was leading up to the climax of him just killing his wife to save the property. But when that was like in the first like 20 minutes, I was like, oh, well, um, where are we going from here, guys? This movie, like these events could happen. These events are like supernatural in any way but it's you know I bet there's people whose stories out there is very similar to this but you know Stephen King can't just have bad stuff happen he has to have bad stuff happen with some extra extra in there so this movie I like this movie because the extra supernatural wife knows things and creepily creeps along and the rats are slowly coming in and slowly attacking is the, the Stephen King crawl is, is what I'm going to way of explaining it that, that he does in his movies where he either just like Right off the bat, it's gonna go crazy, and you just wait to see how crazy it is, or it's gonna slowly creep, and to the point where it creeps right into the inside of your skin, and he did a good job of doing that. Yeah, and like, it's nothing like his, um, It movies or the It book at all, completely, um, uh, this one is definitely more slow-paced, more, unner more unnerving than ever, versus, I guess, the comparison of It, because I've seen It the most out of all of his work, it's more like a... For me, uh, okay, I'm not gonna say it was like, it wasn't, uh, it's weird, because I don't want to say it wasn't scary, but it was very, 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 very unnerving. Yeah, like, it wasn't one of those movies that's gonna get you on gump, jump scares, like cheap, cheap things that we complain often about found footage film, paranormal activities, um, a lot of these other films that just, ha ah! It's not that. And the long list of movies that we've covered on this channel so far. Yeah, it's not a slasher. It's a true, um, you know, thriller horror. Definitely has re a lot of things where it's just all about regret and th what decisions led to this for him. That and, and his life just keeps falling apart as, like, dominoes falling after he attempted to slice her throat. And then he finally got it. And then ever since then, it just knocked over dominoes. During the well, movie, we were discussing it had a telltale heart aspect. And yeah. The problem, and, and, and something I said was, the difference between it and telltale heart is telltale heart is quick. This goes over the, an ex I mean, it doesn't go on for forever, but it goes over the expanse of a year. But it's a slow burn year that doesn't get any better. And as we discussed at the beginning, and people know, back in 1922, life was hard for a farmer. If all these bad things happened without him doing bad things, you know, it it would have been a sad story that didn't leave you feeling good to begin with, but then you add in all the things that, you know, might have happened and things happened that, you know, he gets his hand bit just in time for the him to not be able to patch the hole in the roof, so he has to, you know, live inside, but then, you know, he, he gets the land just in time for his kid to get a girl pregnant and leave, and then he's stuck with the land by, you know, by himself, and it's just... I also like that he went through all the trouble of killing his wife, um, and then... It, 
to, to avoid having to live in the city, and then he pretty much has to sell his land because he can't work it anymore, and then he ends up in the city anyways. Like, he could have just been happy with a family in the city. It's like stopping the uh, inevitable. I am inevitable. Like, if I was in that situation, I'd be like, wow, I really like this farm, but I don't want to lose my family. <laughs> I guess I'm well, going to have to find like out the if there's a, if there well, is his a... wife didn't want him. His wife just wanted the money. No, she wanted him because after, after he lied to her and said, okay, we can all move to the city together, she was so happy. The only thing that, like, their issue was not that they didn't love each other. Their yeah. issue was he wanted to farm and she liked the city. And so that required divorce. Because yeah. you both can't live in the city and farm at the same time. Yes, and it's her land, technically. So she has the leverage. Yeah, yeah but it, but he also is just an asshole. She was uncomfortable when she was drunk talking to her kid. That was kind of weird. Yeah, I thought it was just like, um, no. The, the other thing is, you know, the, the guy was explaining the land and the sun... That, that 100% foreshadowing at the beginning was great. Man's pride was man's land. And so was his son. Guess what's getting taken away? Mm -hmm. You know. This movie was also kind of good of like making you like feel for the characters but at the same time dislike them. There are none of them that I was like yay yeah. I hope this goes well for them. The only person that I could say that was likable in the whole show was the sheriff dude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean the only you want the only good person in the whole show? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, the neighbor was cool. Not cool. No. Oh, you mean Damien Dark? Yes. Yeah. I didn't yes. agree with sending the kid, the the daughter, sending the daughter away. Like that's a bad idea. Like, like okay. So how much it would have changed if when they got pregnant, they're just like, okay, well, we'll just have to help raise the baby together. Yeah, it was the shame. He was a yeah. fancy rich guy. He didn't want the shame. That's why the guy was like, you're not the only one without shame. Well, he lost his kid because of that. So. If you start at the very beginning, the dad's very proud. And at the end, he's not very proud at all. Mm. And the things he was trying to to save are the things that kill him in the end. Like, literally kill him in the end. And that's the other thing, is Stephen King does a really good job of writing the line of, it could 100% be in his head, but it could also not be. He left hints like, she knew stuff that she shouldn't have known. And it's like, well, is it in his head? Because how would he have known? Or is he know. just remembering back on it incorrectly? Don't know. I reckon. We should probably put down our reviews for this film. Yeah, the, ra the ratings. Ratings. This is a hard one for me to, to rate. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Definitely. Given that it was a Netflix film, there's probably not any kind of box office or anything. No. Same, it, with, same with the last one, too. But you said there was no box office or nothing. Do, 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 do. It's nice to have with Josh. Whatever. Psychosis is an understanding confusionary thing from what I know in the classes I've taken I took a class where at the end of the class we were shown videos of people and we're supposed to diagnose them I in my unprofessional mind don't have a thing I could diagnose him with because you know the things he was seeing were biting him he was smelling them he was interacting with them they weren't imaginary but at the same time you know the, the, the concept of this thing is something you know I, what I mean is is this a real thing? Is this a spooky thing? Because most Stephen Kings, you, you can tell. But then there's other ones where it's like, it's a long, it's hard to tell the way it ends. Like, whether this is a spooky thing or whether this is a real thing. In this movie. The other movies, it's it's definite sometimes. So, apparently, um, there's no box office, obviously. The budget is apparently $5 million. Mm. This, movie, guess... this movie did not... Did not cost very much to produce if you think about it they had their cast because yeah, they're not doing lot. anything that takes a lot of cgi they had like the maybe the cow scene and um, they cut away for that maybe some of the the effects so that wasn't bad um review wise um the critics give this film a 9.1 and the and audience yeah and the audience give it a 5.7 i kind of yeah i like that's de that's definitely decide uh, divisive too, like very split down the middle. It's good, but it's also not good. Mm -hmm. There wasn't something Stephen King tends to bring up the spectacular. There's not something spectacular about this. There's not something super it's haunting. Simple. Yeah. 
or like deeply profound about this. And I don't feel like even the ending. The I didn't part. for this. I didn't feel um, satisfied with the ending. And then, mm-hmm. like I figured that they were gonna show him, or like, at least have like a sound bit where I showed him like dead, dying or whatever. But it was just. Like is he like going you to... like you like y- y'all both you can probably sit there and, and like agree with me like we were sitting there it was just dead quiet after you said the last line where we all three was just going yeah is it the end um yeah like they uh, did he kill himself are they killing him mm-hmm. what uh, did the that rats a, get to that's him what by I'm saying is Stephen does a really good job of writing the line throughout the movie but like I said it usually ends and this one doesn't end we like okay is it in his head is it not in his head I'm gonna tell you right now when it comes to my rating skill I don't see it as like. Yep, it's got six. amazing cinematography. It's got good storytelling. Like the story doesn't fall apart at any point. There's no like laps or holes or loose ends at the end. But it's not necessarily like a. It's got that slow burn. That's good if it's got the super thriller brain twist. But because it all makes sense logically slowly over time, other than the slight creepy appearing of a you know a ghost lady, that it, it was just a sad story. I've landed it at a 6.2. Um, it is above average, but it's not really good because of the things we've talked about. The main thing for me is just it's the runtime. Because, like I said in the beginning, I thought the main premise of the film was him fighting whether or not, the battle in his mind whether or not to kill his, his wife. But then when that happened the first 20 minutes, I was like, um, yeah, well, there went the main story. I thought, what's going to happen next? <laughs> Last snippet before it. If... I feel like I would have given this a higher rating if they didn't periodically show the scene of him in the bedroom in the end. And what I mean by that is if they kept that a secret till the very end, it would have been more of a shock, more of a snap factor or a twist at the end. Like, But you see him in a room, you're like, you slowly find, you, you, my brain went too many, too many questions like, why is he here? Is he at home? Is he not at home? What's in the wall? Oh, it's a mouse. That's not really that creepy. Like if they feel like the slow crouching around, if there was more crawling noises the, the mouse literally followed him everywhere and every scene of him as a mouse that aspect that mm-hmm. they showed too much of the end him writing which I know is important but it, that end felt too soft like he was relaxed I thought it was him fondly writing about his things or maybe it was a story he was telling for money later or, you know and so it, it didn't have that in snap that it should have had I kind of felt like the whole movie was like him writing a suicide note yes and that Kind of was kind of weird because it wasn't like a super sad or whatever. And, and where, whereas you mm-hmm. were kind of taken aback by the going back and forth between the scenes, I actually kind of, and I know this is going to sound really weird mm-hmm. because like when it comes to certain movies, I kind of say these kind of things take away from the film, but just how it was written, because because you, mm-hmm. you can do this kind of stuff, go back and forth in between scenes, just stop and go there if mm-hmm. it's written good. And this movie was written. I think it was written really good. On book and on paper, this would be good, but on on the s- silver screen, it looks like some of the the, the greatness of in the writing mm-hmm. kind of got lost in lost in translation, pretty much. Yes. Because of that, I'm going to give it a lower rating than I want to give it if it had that. And so I was thinking more along the lines of like a six or a seven. I would consider like really good that that feel, but I'm probably going to give it a. F- Five point seven five. I like the cinematography. They did a good job of explaining the period, and I feel like the story flowed completely. There wasn't mm-hmm. any lapses or holes, which sometimes happens in in some movies. But it's mm-hmm. not something I want to watch again. But it's not something that's going to make me stay up at night. It's not something that I learned something really important from. You know, don't murder your wife and then try to cover it up. So to summarize my notes. Um, the unnerving scenes were actually done really good. I felt like the writing on paper was fantastic. I just felt like there were some bits here and there that were lost in translation, and like it's more of an unnerving, slow burn thriller than it actually is of a horror film. Which sometimes those I do consider some of those as horror movies. It's just just the whole lost in translation thing. It's kind of what bums it up for me. But I will say that I was very like drawn to uh, I guess the father character actor because of how he was how he was delivering his lines and how he was acting and everything mm-hmm. I would probably have to go, agree closer with Krieger's rating and probably go with a 6.3 it's, it's again like with my mindset we're rating these films based off like 
if if it's a horror like a good horror movie or not and it's like one of those like it's good but it's not so horror the lost in translation and the runtime all together in a weird melting pot it doesn't work yeah for me uh... So yeah, that is our uh, first night of horror fest. <laughs> um, we hope you enjoyed these two reviews that are now in complete separate identities and whatnot. When they're supposed to be the same one, but it's whatever. Um, so Gregor, what films? Will, what films will, will they be expecting the next time they see us in a review for horror fest? Oh yes, let me pull up the. He about get up saying he was done, but then he completely <laughs> forgot about calendar. that. Hereditary and Midsommar. Midsummer. Mid Midsummer. 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 It's Midsummer. I'm gonna start calling it Mid Salamander because that's it's what my brain is saying every mid time. Mid Salamander. You... That weird Hereditary and Midsummer. The flower movie. This is Mike Check ninety five with another Mike Check Productions October Horror Fest review. Signing out. But also always ask yourself the questions. Why not? And who is? And if you have it with them, don't run away. And where's the salsa?